questions is Mr. Fleming of Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> panel, I'm from uh, the 4th District of Louisiana, Shreveport, Bossier City, DeSoto Parish. Uh, that's where the Hainesville Shell is. And only three short years ago, we had no idea really what the Hainesville Shell is, was, or would be in the future. And it's turned out that <clears throat> it's had a tremendous impact on our economy. $11 billion so far entering the economy, jobs, uh, poor parishes that are now uh, doing tremendously well economically. Um, we, we see police departments, sheriff de departments, infrastructure, all of these, these things being improved, local government, uh, as I say, high-paying jobs with, with good income. And we're beginning to meet the country's needs in terms of natural gas, which, as you know, is the cleanest form of uh, hydrocarbon uh, that's now available. Um, I can tell you that we have not seen any significant problems. And, um, and so it, it really is beyond me to wonder now with a 9.2 percent unemployment rate with energy costs as high as it's ever been and the country in such a desperate economic situation and a technology which is 50, 60 years old uh, and, and is proven safe and even the EPA in 2004 said was perfectly safe. Why in the world would we even be thinking about banning uh, this type of technology which is so essential not just for gas but probably for the future of oil as well domestically. So my question, uh, for instance, uh, Ms. Heiser, uh, do you, what is the typical depth of drilling in horizontal, uh, in the horizontal drilling process? Um, I'm not aware of that. We have no wells that have been drilled on the George Washington Jefferson. Or but I mean in, the, uh, in a typical Forest. gas well, gas shale. I'm not familiar with Anyone that. else? I think, uh, it depends on what part of the country you're in. It's a real specific uh, uh, geologic formation specific. And as a general rule of thumb, uh, most of the shale gas development that I've read about and, and, and not necessarily witnessed per firsthand, uh, there's usually a, a, a vertical well that's drilled anywhere from Just four to 5,000 feet. Four to 5,000 feet. Four to 5,000 feet. feet. Okay. And then they, then and they where, drill where is the water table? Again, that varies from different parts of the country. It can be in the first couple of hundred feet, or it could be down as, as low as uh, maybe a thousand feet, but right. near surface. So the horizontal drilling is often, in fact, usually five times the depth. Uh, Ms. Heiser, how many layers of casing is there as you bore down in the ground to get down to the horizontal level? I'm not familiar with that information. Okay. Anyone else? It can be a number of layers depending on the depth. Typical. Three to four with cement. I, I describe it as the old collapsible cup concept mm -hmm. where they're just, you know, you start with the larger surface and as right. you go down there's more and more. Right. Uh, I would say in our shell formation typical is six. And how many episodes are you aware where uh, hydrofracking fluid has leaked into the water table through, through the, uh, the casing? I'm not aware of any anybody that I can point to. Anybody? Uh, can anybody <clears throat> specify a, s a s single incidence of death as a result of a hydrofracking process and the hydrofracking fluid somehow contaminating the water supply? Anyone? Not aware of it. Serious injury? No, I'm aware of it. So <clears throat> if we're talking about billions of dollars of impact and the possibility of transforming our energy from an oil base system that we have today to at least in part natural gas and by the way we we in the United States have more natural gas than any place in the world as it turns out and, and this is a fact we only found out just in the last few years if we have all of this potential available to us and no harm to anyone why in the world would we be considered banning this process? Anyone on the panel willing to answer that question? The, the purpose of us looking at uh, the, the, the restrictions on the use of 
uh, horizontal drilling on the George Washington National Forest have to do with issues around water use, the, the volumes of water that are associated with that, what would be the potential uh, effects but, on but surface water resources? But we've been doing it for 60 years, sir, and we have no evidence that there's a problem. Why do we want to ban it first and then ask questions later when we've got 60 years of experience? One of the, one of the things that I think are uh, the, the input that we're getting in this, through this draft environmental impact process is going to allow us to have additional information, helpful information for us to make You've that decision. You've got 60 years, sir. How much do you need? I believe the, the horizontal drilling technology is more recent than 60 years, but it... Hydrofracking has been around for 60 years. Well, that's what we're talking about here. Well, we're, we're, actually, we're talking... 90 we're talk 90 percent of wells today require hydrofracking. In We've got 60 years of experience, not one single death, no injuries even that I know of, and yet we're going to ban or potentially ban the use of hydrofracking and or horizontal drilling. The, 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 the uh, proposed, the, the preferred alternative in the plan that we're talking about allows hydrofracking with vertical wells. It's the horizontal drilling is what was. It's no good proposed. without horizontal uh, drilling, sir. You, no, it's been you, used for 60 or 70 well, years. Well, yes, but, but the type of shale formations that we have today you're going to get very little yield out of vertical wells. We have to go horizontal. And we're horizontal at two miles down. So, you know, you're already below the, the, the um, water table. The, you hit that through the vertical drill. So, if anything, it would be safer at the horizontal level. Thank you. I yield back. Mr.